folks, um, Congressman Louis Gohmert is uh, is someone that I have I had a chance to talk to on a couple of occasions. But more importantly, I've admired his work and uh, and his courageous stand. Uh, Congressman Gohmert, I am here in North Carolina with a good friend of yours, Dr. Rick Scarborough. Mm. Uh, we're working with pastors to get them activated. Mm-hmm. I know your heart for this country, so please take about try, uh, seven to ten minutes to share with us what's on your mind, uh, and then if you would, uh, add, uh, take a few questions. But thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule to join us. I know you've been all over television talking about the issues affecting this country, and we're glad that you took time to be with us. Well, thank you so much, uh, Bishop. You are a dear friend, and you talk about standing up. Uh, I was telling uh, some folks this weekend that there is nobody in all of the United States more persecuted than a black man who is a conservative, and especially if he is a Christian. And uh, you, Bishop, are an amazing man. Uh, I hope your health is doing okay, but people on the call, I hope you will be praying for Bishop Perry Jackson. He is a an incredible. It's, it's, it's EW. It's EW. EW. Uh, Congressman, right? Harry's a good friend, though. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But anyway, okay. uh, and uh, just appreciate you so very much. It, 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 you know, it's the fire I take is nothing, nothing compared to what you take. But uh, I was asked to touch on a couple of things, particularly first off on the border. I've spent a few weekends, the last few weekends, down in the border and uh, between my district, there in my district doing stuff, and then run down to McAllen. It's only about a 10 or 11 hour drive. But uh, listen, there there is so much going on, and uh, you may have heard the president has requested uh, uh, a supplemental so that he can financially address the things on the border. Uh, it is an emergency, according to them. They've got to get this This uh, originally 3.7. Now they're saying, well, really, we need $4.3 billion. Folks, all you need to know about the request that the uh, president is pushing and people are clamoring about that they've got to have its emergency is that of the, whether it's 3.7 or point. I'm sorry, 4.3 billion. That's with a B. Only 25 million, with an M, of that 4 billion or so dollars is being requested for this fiscal year that ends September 30th. So think about that. It's an emergency, yet only 25 million is needed now, and it's not going to help enforce our border. That $25 million will go to Health and Human Services. Folks, it is a joke. It's a lie. It would be a joke if there weren't people dying and, and it being so serious. But uh, I also uh, want to immediately take issue with uh, the president's taking credit with the uh, lower numbers the last couple of weeks. He's saying, ah, you know, Perry didn't have to do that. Uh, uh, the numbers are already going down. The reason they're going down is that Texas committed millions of dollars. They bought four gunboats that run up and down the river all night, all day. And, uh, in fact, Saturday when I was down there at McAllen, there's an area you've probably seen on the news where people run back and forth uh, between the park on the Mexican side and the American park. When nobody is there, uh, they think nobody's on the American side when they don't see any border patrol is when they'll try to do it what they don't understand is the constable there precinct three in Hidalgo County is he and his deputies are arresting people when they come in and I asked him uh, uh, last month I said now I mean I just saw you detain two people that were zipped over on a jet ski and I know the Supreme Court has said you know, that uh, in the Arizona case, you, you know, state, local government cannot enforce the immigration law. So I'm thrilled that you did. Somebody needs to detain people that enter illegally. But uh, how are you enforcing immigration law? And uh, he said, sir, we're not enforcing immigration law. He said, when you came in the uh, Ansel Dewis Park uh did you have to pay $4? I said, yeah, I had to pay that to come in. And he said, well, 
those people that came across the ri river did not pay their four dollars so we're arresting them for trespassing for not paying their four dollars and then we get them and turn them over to uh, the border patrol the border patrol can't cover that area as thoroughly as the constables and dps does and on saturday afternoon there was uh, somebody had paid the folks there, and you don't cross unless the drug lord with jurisdiction over that area is okay with it, which means you got to get them some money. But anyway, this guy got run across, and ironically, the jet ski ran out of gas, and I was on the Texas DPS, Department of Public Safety, boat that, that <laughs> goes 70 miles an hour, and uh, Randy Weber, congressman from down South Texas, uh, it, and I had just gotten off, and they got the call, hey, there's a jet ski here that ran out of gas, and the other guy, other two jet skis are trying to pull it back to the other side. So they go hauling buns up there, 60-plus miles an hour, uh, and come between the jet skis and the uh, one that ran out of gas that had transported the guy illegally. And... Uh, those guys still had the nerve to keep coming back and trying to lasso it until DPS, you know, zoomed it up to the bank, and then Border Patrol hooked a rope on it and drug it up into the concrete parking lot. So it took that out of commission, and the uh, the Coyotes were really hot, really upset, and uh, if they could have arrested the guy, if they could have gotten him, they, the, the guy that was driving, they would have. But once again, thankfully, the good old constable's office and DPS were there on the job. The constable arrested the guy, and uh, Randy Weber took a picture of him sitting in the truck where he was about to be taken in. Turns out he's Chinese. Uh, we welcome Chinese. We welcome people from every country. But why does a Chinese man have to pay a coyote to run him across into Mexico illegally across the Rio Grande River? And why are, is there a huge spike in what they call SIA, special interest aliens, from countries like Syria, Lebanon, others where terrorism is, uh, is widespread? Uh, there's been a huge spike in those guys. But the lower numbers are because uh, more DPS have been out there on the border working in conjunction with our Border Patrol. And I always thought until I went down there a couple of months ago that uh, I would just end up seeing people coming constantly, nonstop across the border, because we know how many are, are coming across. Well, it turns out the people that are being brought across in rafts mainly, they want to get caught. They turn themselves in as quickly as they can. Uh, but the coyotes do not want to get caught. So I've spent you know, total days on the border and have not actually seen somebody cross. I've come upon them. I've seen them immediately after they got across, but they're very good at slipping across and then zooming back to the to the Mexico side with the raft. And so you just see the folks that crossed. And uh, so the, they do not want to cross if they think there's Texas DPS, National Guard, Border Patrol, and the governor had started sending game wardens down there. They've been down there the last two weekends. I'd run into them all hours of the day and night down there. So you add game wardens that are very visible along the dirt roads and at the at the top of the bank on the American side. That's what it takes to prevent them from coming over. Cody seeing that there's government officials. So for this president to be saying, ah, you know, Perry didn't need to do anything, uh, you know, the numbers are down. They're down because Texas is doing something. And under Article 1, Section 10, that I had read, no telling how many hundreds of times, but had not really hit home until uh, two or three months ago, but it says, in effect, that no state can have uh, an army or a navy or levy tariffs, duties, or make agreements with foreign countries or other states unless the state is being invaded or in imminent danger. Uh, Texas and the United States is being invaded, and we're in danger. And I know you've heard a lot of people saying, well, they're fleeing gang violence. Well, I guess it was Friday night during the middle of the night when I'm talking to Border Patrol out there along the uh, dirt road by the river, by the way, the same dirt road where uh, 
I saw my first tarantula that wasn't in captivity. But uh, anyway, uh, the Hispanic Border Patrolman was telling me that, you know, over 90% of the people that he questions in Spanish, they immediately say, we were fleeing gang violence. And he said, man, I push back hard when they say that. Because I say, you may want to lie like that to somebody else, but you and I both know that it's the gangs that are getting paid to bring you up here. So don't tell me you're fleeing gang violence when you were being transported up here to U.S. by gangs. And he says over 90% of the time they'll say, well, that's true, but we were told to say that we were fleeing gang violence. Look, the gangs are making money off these people coming. They're not getting away from them. They're making money doing that. So I'm talking faster than I normally do, trying to get in as much information as I can. But you also, need to, you also need to know that um, the Marine Corps General John Kelly, who is commander of SOUTHCOM, the area that in, includes our southern border, he has made the statement that uh, the penetration by criminals and terrorists across our southern border is an existential threat. Now, most of you have heard that term existential used about Israel and about Iran uh, getting nuclear weapons being an existential threat to Israel's uh, even existing. Well, existential threat is, that's what it means. It is a threat to someone's existence. And you have a Marine general, before the president got a hold of him at least, uh, saying that what's happening across our southern border is an existential threat. Uh, by the way, it, it, I mentioned that it was a Texas DPS boat that caught the uh, uh, the jet ski and prevented them from getting it back. Why? Because the Border Patrol doesn't have boats. This administration won't get them boats. Governor Perry has begged for um, Department of Homeland Security to get boats and help out on our border, and they will not do it. They will not help patrol our border down there. So Texas is on their own. Uh, I think it was a good thing that what um, our governor did, I've been encouraging that. Uh, I, I have... Um, been stating publicly that under Article 1, Section 10, a state like Texas is free to do that. Um, let's see. Oh, well, go ahead. Now, let me, I, I covered the government border. But one, oh, one other thing I was supposed to mention was about our Attorney General uh, not doing his job. He is not doing his job. His Department of Justice has turned into a Department of Just Us or Department of Injustice. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it is outrageous what he is not doing, and I do think he's got to go. I think he needs to either resign or be impeached because of the cover-ups of Fast and Furious and, and failing to properly investigate the Internal Revenue Service. He has been complicit in uh, some of these inappropriate and illegal activities by his failure to properly stop them and uh, you know even investigate them properly so anyway I think that's my time but I'll be glad to take questions if I can well congressman thank you again look yeah, if yep, folks yep. press star six to get in queue I'm sure this is a hot issue I know there are probably a lot of questions so let me lead it off and then Daniel will go right to others uh, first of all, mm. we all feel compassion for these children, Congressman Gomer, and, and, oh, and we absolutely. understand that. But, but we know that if we don't send these children back, we, we have opened the floodgates for more and more and more to come. Right. So are we going to be able to do that? That's part one. And here's part two. Would you respond to the issue that if Republicans don't do, quote, unquote, comprehensive immigration reform right away. It will spell the end of the Republican Party because the Hispanics will vote against us because they'll know that we hate Hispanics and so on and so forth. Uh, so could you respond to both of those? Bishop, thank you so much. Uh, you know what, though? We're not hearing that so much anymore. If Republicans don't vote for a comprehensive bill, then it'll be the end of the Republican Party. We're not hearing that as much because more and more people have figured out that the word comprehensive, it placed in front of the word bill, uh, what that means in Washington is 
that there's some really bad laws that somebody wants to get in place, and the only way they could ever pass is if they're hidden in a massive bill where nobody finds them before uh, it's it's voted on. That's what comprehensive means. Because if we really want to do an effective job, we will take one issue at a time and deal with it. But the other problem is you have a president who will not enforce our borders and who is not enforcing, seeing that the law is properly enforced. So as I keep telling other members of the House and Senate, it makes no sense to pass any bill until the president is is showing that he is trying to secure the border. This president hadn't shown that. He's showing lower numbers and therefore taking credit for what Texas is doing, but he has not shown that he's willing to uh, enforce and secure the border, and therefore I filed a resolution in July of last year, over a year or about a year ago, that basically went through all the whereas is explaining that the president's not securing the border, that it is a threat, that we shouldn't pass anything until it's secured, and not as determined by this president, but but resolved that the, it's a sense of the House of Representatives that we should not pass any bill having to do with immigration or the border until the president secures the border as determined by the border states. Not by GAO, not by Homeland Security, but by the border states themselves, uh, because they're the ones in a better position to know. That's what ought to be done about immigration, nothing until the border is secure. And the president's shown he's not going to do it. If it's going to be done, it will be done by states uh, just putting forces uh, there. And the Supreme Court said states don't have the authority to enforce immigration, but Nobody, you can't find, I haven't been able to find, nor the uh, constitutional lawyers or professors I've been consulting that are looking, can't find a case that has referenced the third clause of Article 1, Section 10. If a state's being invaded, and in our case, 300,000 so far just in recent months, compared to 150,000 that invaded France on D-Day, and we're told there's probably 300,000 in the pipeline on their way, Folks, that's an invasion, and it has put us in imminent danger. We can't get the numbers from the federal authorities, but Texas has done a good job pulling them together. And since October of 2008 through April of this year, five and a half years, there have been over 171,000 people booked into Texas county jails who were here illegally and who had uh, had uh, uh, committed a crime. And in wow. fact, of the 171,000 who had uh, committed a crime, there were um, 671,000 separate crimes committed by those 171,000 people. And what even makes it more tragic is that uh, there were... 2,993 homicides, people killed by illegal aliens, and 7,695 sexual assaults. So you think the families of the nearly 3,000 murders uh, would like to have had the border secured before their loved one was murdered? Uh, the 7,700 sexual assaults, I'm sure uh, those Folks, those women would love to have had our border secured so that they wouldn't have this this travesty committed upon them themselves. Uh, so if you want to talk about a war on women, talk about the president not securing the border that allowed 7,000 women to be raped in, in, or sexually assaulted in Texas. So this is serious stuff. And uh, the, the um, uh, it, it's just... We have got to deal with this. The general himself says existential threat, and I believe he's right. And I, I, I am sure that uh, with people like you in leadership, we're going to continue to fight to make sure something is done. And Mexican citizens are suffering, citizens are oh, suffering yes. with this as much as anybody else. This idea that we're anti-Hispanic is just a lie that needs oh, to be Oh, of course it's a lie. And, and I, I tell you, there was a little girl, not this weekend, but the weekend before, with a, a group of people, and uh, 
she was with a, a woman, and she was asking, she, really, Bishop, she was one of the most beautiful girls I've ever seen in my life, and I had three beautiful daughters. Um, and this beautiful little girl, big brown eyes, was asked, uh, you know, uh, are are you glad to leave home and come to the United States? She didn't mention gang violence. She didn't mention anything. She started crying and saying she didn't want to leave home. She wants to go home. Uh, it was not her idea to come to the United States. Some adult sent her. And the best thing we can do is enforce our borders so that, um, you know, this people won't be tempted to send beautiful children like her up here. And, you know, it, it was worth noting that last week there was a big uh, rally by North Koreans here in the United States, uh, legally here, I might add. And they had a big rally out on the, uh, the, the Capitol uh, grounds. And what they were asking is not for North Koreans to be allowed to escape the inhumanity uh, being perpetuated upon them by their their leader, their dictator. They were asking for us to help them put pressure on North Korea so that all North Koreans could live freely. Wouldn't that be a better thing for the United States to do for those Central American countries where everybody could live free and have a better life instead of having people flood into the United States. Uh, it, a exactly. good neighbor as a country would help them fight the drug lords, would help them fight um, you know, the crime yes, and, and, and Con sexual Yeah. Let me, let's, let's get some sure. other people in here because they've been waiting.